this video, we're going to talk about how stratified rocks are formed. First, let's describe some vocabulary words. We have bedding, stratification, and lamination. Stratification refers to layering that occurs in sedimentary rocks. Now, what is a layer? A layer is a three-dimensional feature common in sedimentary rocks, okay? Igneous rocks can also exhibit layering, especially when formed at the surface of the earth. Next is bedding. Bedding is the layering in sedimentary rocks which are greater than one centimeter thick. Lamination, on the other hand, is layering in sedimentary rocks which are less than one centimeter thick. Okay, so bedding greater than one, lamination less than one centimeter. Okay, so where do we use this? Let's say you have a diary. Okay, so in a diary, you write the date and the important things that happen on that day, right? Right, yes, absolutely. We use this so that we can go back to the memories that happen on that day. This is the same with the layers of rocks, okay? So the succession of layers or beds in a sedimentary sequence represents the successive time intervals in the Earth's history. So the bottom being the oldest and the topmost representing the youngest time interval. Oh, got it. Now let's recall the sedimentary rocks and processes. Remember that sedimentary processes are essentially superficial, meaning they happen or occur at or near the surface of the earth at low temperature and low pressure conditions. In high areas, the dominant sedimentary processes are erosion and transport. Water is an important agent of sediment transport. Weathered and eroded materials are transported and deposited to low-lying areas. Now, when sediments accumulate, they tend to blanket the surface of accumulation. The surface of accumulation is generally low and flat. Sediments therefore tend to form tabular layers. Not only do sediments form layers, they also tend to cover an extensive area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If conditions on the surface do not change, meaning there's constant rates of weathering, erosion, or deposition, only thick, homogeneous, and undifferentiated sedimentary rocks will form, just like this. Okay, so this is what we call bedding or layering. Okay, so bedding or layering in sedimentary rocks is a reflection of the changing conditions during deposition. Each layer represents an interval of time where conditions have remained uniform. Let me put it in a language you can understand. So if they're the same, meaning the condition didn't change. So what defines a bed or a layer? Right, so how do you distinguish one bed to another? In this figure, the beds are clearly defined by a change in color or shade. A change in color can reflect differences in grain size and or composition. Now let's talk about grain size first. Grain size in sedimentary rocks is commonly a function of the energy of the environment of deposition. So meaning, fine-grained sediments generally reflect low energy and quiet settings meaning they are protected from waves and strong currents. So again, grain size, function of energy. Fine-grained, they are from low energy. Next, we have composition. A variety of factors influence the composition of sedimentary rocks, such as source of rocks, length and duration of transport, climate, volcanism, etc. A change in climate influences rates of weathering. Okay, so dry versus wet conditions, as well as rates and mechanisms of erosion and transport. Um, what else? It was something that I was just about to say. This figure shows a sedimentary layering soil model, or what we call stratigraphic column, or simply strat column. The first layer is a mixture of sand and pebbles. This layer suggests transport and deposition by running water. The coarse-grained nature or texture of the sediment means that it cannot be transported by wind. The rounded pebbles indicate the considerable duration of transport, 
So reverse sedimentation can produce similar deposits. I just want to share that roundness is defined as the degree of smoothing of the surface of a sediment due to abrasion. Huh? So meaning, the longer the duration of transport, the greater chance for abrasion, and therefore, greater degree of roundness. Oh! <laughs> okay. The next layer is composed of sand. If you notice, there's no coarse material here such as the pebble. This suggests the absence of a source for the coarser materials or the transporting medium does not have the capacity to transport sediments with sizes coarser than sand. The uniform grain size also suggests a transporting medium that effectively segregates or sorts sediments into separated grain sizes. Again, well-sorted sand or sandstone can also be associated with river sedimentation. The third layer is composed of modeling clay. Okay, so the modeling clay layer represents very fine-grained sediments. It ranges from silt to clay size. So very fine-grained sediments are more commonly transported as suspended materials. Rivers, especially during flood events, carry a lot of suspended load. That means that when flooding recedes, suspended load can settle down or be deposited as blanket of mud and silt. <sighs> I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. The next layer is a mixture of sand, soil, pebbles, and wood fragments. Poorly sorted sediment materials containing relatively large floating debris or surrounded by fine grained material are typical of debris flow deposits. Recall that a debris flow is a form of mass wasting process, like what we have studied in the previous lessons. Next, we have the sand with marine shells. The presence of marine shells indicates marine conditions. This layer could represent a period in time when the sea level was high, meaning the area was below sea level. Lastly, we have the graded bedding. So when sediments are deposited from suspension, coarser and denser materials settle first, followed by progressively finer grained material. Okay, so the resulting sedimentary structure is called a graded bedding. So in extreme conditions, the suspended load of a flooded river may consist of pebbles, sand, silt, and clay. As flooding recedes, the suspended load will be progressively deposited according to grain size, thus forming graded bedding. Another topic that is important in studying stratification is law of superposition. Superposition is a fundamental principle in stratigraphy. It states that in an undisturbed, meaning there's no fault or folds, the bottom layer was formed before the top layer. Okay. So however, rocks may be subjected to deformation, and sedimentary layers or beds may be overturned. So with this in mind, we need to ensure that the rock layers are in the correct sequence and position to correctly interpret the geological history of an area. So for your homework, what? explain how graded bedding would help in determining the correct sequence of layers. Identify which is the top and which is the bottom. Sir!